So welcome back to the afternoon session. This is a lab session, but before the actual lab, we will have a small demo over here of about approximately one hour on uh, DBWA and how you would attack, uh, you would launch a XSS attack on a vulnerable web application. Uh, that will also be accompanied by a demo of a complete exploit involving N Nmap, Nessus, and Metasploit. So the new thing over here is Metasploit. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the cross-site scripting attacks. So we will be using the same application, which we have used in SQL injection, DVWA. So uh, what is cross-site scripting? First of all, I will give a brief introduction about it because Sir has discussed in, their in his lecture uh, uh, about the cross-site scripting. So what is cross-site scripting? It is an attack which enables attacker to inject client-side script into the web pages viewed by other user. So these client-side scripts could be JavaScript, VB script, anything. And what are the types of these cross-site scripting attacks? First is non-persistent, which is also known as reflected accesses. Second one is persistent uh, accesses, which is also known as stored accesses, because these scripts, uh, which is, uh, the, these uh, client-side scripts are permanently stored on the web pages. That's why it, it is called stored or persistent. The next one is DOM-based accesses. So uh, for our demo purposes, we will be only demonstrating uh, only non-persistent and the persistent accesses, not uh, DOM-based accesses. So I will now quickly move to the demo. So uh, I will be using the same application we used in the SQL injection, which is DVWA application. Now it is asking for your username and the password. Now it has default username is admin and the password is password. So now I will click on the login. Now I'm logged in into the uh, DVWA application. Before moving on to uh, DVWA and actually showing you the attack, do you know what is a cookie and why it is used for? Because cookie is a very important thing in uh, session hijacking and uh, cross site scripting is mainly used for the session hijacking. So you should know what is a cookie. So anybody know? I mean, uh, HTTP cookie or web browser cookie. Text file. So what this text file contain? Uh, cookie stores the information which we send from one, one, one client web page to server web page or server to client web page. We at, and at any moment we can uh, uh, delete the cookie. Why? Okay, so this is a, this is a random string uh, sent by the server. So why it is used? Hello. To track the user activity. To track the user activity. Yeah. Uh, so you are talking about persistent cookie actually. There is another cookie called session cookie. Do you know about it? Which will be given by the server to communicate from uh, client to server in the next uh, future communications. So uh, why it is It is a 16-bit ID which will be given by the server itself and yeah. it will be stored at the client. Yeah, sure. So suppose you are using this application. Now you, you uh, give your credentials, say uh, like admin and the password. Server is, will give you a cookie for future. Why? Means... Uh, Next time whenever the client wants to interact with the server, with that 16-bit 16 16, uh, uh, characters ID, it will uh, contact with the server. Yes, yeah, so, so cookie, cookie is replayed actually, yes. that is called cookie replaying. So what happens is, because of the HTTP protocol, that is a stateless protocol. Stateless means when you provided your credentials initially, so means server does not uh, differentiate between the multiple uh, HTTP cookies, HTTP sorry, HTTP requests. So that's why it is called stateless, it does not maintain any state of the user. Uh, so that's why it sends when you logged inside a web application, it gives you a uh, random string called the cookie and this cookie is replayed. In every sub subsequent uh, request, you send the cookie and server will again uh, send back the cookie. So that is called the session cookie. So when you log out from the system, this cookie is deleted and uh, server also delete that cookie. So that is a session cookie. Now someone mentioned the tracking cookie. So yeah, what is a tracking cookie? That is also called persistent cookie. There are two types of, uh, there are many types, but these two are main. What is persistent cookie? It stores at client side. Basically, session is maintained by the <coughs> server only, and the cookies are stored at client side. Yes. Session are not going to store at uh, uh, this uh, client side. Persistent session cookie will not be stored on the client, client side. side. 
you are saying that no uh, that's uh, session know. session okay. basically session is maintained by the server and uh, server is only handling the sessions whereas the cookie cookie is totally stored at the client side at where that means it if it is a stored that means it is a persistent cookie persistent means they are stored at the client browser so uh, actually uh, i want to clarify that uh, cookies are always stored on the client side whether it is a session cookie or the persistent cookie session cookie is for a particular session suppose i log out it will be deleted persistent cookie stays for a long after the session also so persistent cookie is also called the tracking cookie so suppose you are using any e-commerce site like mintra or flipkart and you browse around some pages like you are searching for some track pants and you are searching only the track pants for uh, uh, in the website now the server uh, set a cookie called the persistent cookie in your browser set, uh, which instruct this when uh, again you go to the website after some time it will show you some suggestions so how it is making those suggestions because because in the previous session it has stored a persistent cookie in your browser which indicates the which pages you have accessed last so that's why this is called the persistent cookie because it lasts over the session after the session also so this is a difference of between the persistent on uh, session cookie. Experiment? Experiment? Yeah, there will be expiry date also. For every cookie, there will be expiry date. For session cookie, it lo uh, lasts with the session. And for persistent cookie, it will be uh, for one uh, over a one year or. That, that depends, na? That depends, yes, sure. The cookie time, if you have, it will be reverse the from Yes, yes, yes. So suppose I want to, I have logged into the DVW application, I want to see what cookies it has stored in my system. So one thing I can do, there is a plugin called inspect element inside the Mozilla Firefox. You can see here in the last, this is inspect element with firebug. If you click here, so here is a section called cookies, when you click it, you can see there are two cookies are set, PHP, says ID, which is the name of the cookie. And this is a random number, random string which is given by the web application to the client. Fine. And there is another cookie that, that is a security cookie. Uh, so currently my application is uh, security level is medium. So to differentiate between the request, uh, because we can set multiple, uh, many uh, levels of security in uh, inside this application. So how it differentiate the uh, levels? So it has set a cookie called security, which is set to medium. So if I changes my security level to low, suppose uh, going to DVW security, then changing it to low, then submit it. Now I will check again, what is my cookie? So you can see the security cookie has been changed to low. Fine. The PHP session ID is same until I log out. This is a uh, session cookie actually. In this particular for this particular application, if you log out and uh, again log in, uh, different uh, again log in, then this uh, DVW application uh, have default uh, level to set uh, level is set to be high. For each session, there will be a security cookie as well as the other cookie. Yeah. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. For, for each, each session, session, there will be two cookies. Then there will be two cookies for this particular application. There may be another application which may be using several of cookies, like seven cookies, ten cookies, depending on their uses. For security applications, it will be... Not for security application, but for this DVW application, for this particular DVW application. Okay. So one question. Yes, ma'am. Can we inspect the element that internet is going also? Yeah, there is a, a plugin also for inspect. Like you can do it on the Chrome also, you can do it on the in, uh, Internet Explorer. Internet at Chrome, but I didn't find this inspect element at Internet Explorer. So there may be... Uh, there are, the name is not inspect element, I think, uh, for Internet Explorer. The name is different. If you want, I can show you later if you want uh, in my computer, in Internet Explorer. So moving ahead, uh, so the, we know that cookie is very important part of a session. So what happens if uh, someone stole your cookie? Suppose you have logged in and so web application given you a cookie. Now, this why this cookie should, uh, should be a secret? Uh, what happens if I, this cookie is stolen by another user? What he can do? He can hack your sensitive information like passwords are written. Uh, how how you uh, how you are saying that uh, it will uh, steal? Yes. The get method that data will be stored on the cookie. Whenever if any another person logged onto the system, he can open the cookie file and he can look at the sensitive information. 
and at that at that time he can also stole that information so uh, yes uh, that's what before coming out from the any uh, uh, we'll try to uh, elip- delete those cookies from the action outside uh, if you go to net net centers yes. we have to delete them yes yes otherwise they may stole the sensitive information uh, actually uh, what happens is suppose you are logged into the facebook and they have stored a session cookie inside your browser now if i stole your cookie i stole your cookie then i can make the uh, request to the server facebook server with this cookie now he will think the facebook server will think i am you not because uh, the cookie is set to this he will match the cookie and this cookie is yours so my, your home page will be logged in inside my browser so that is used for that that's how the session hijacking happens if the someone hack and stole your cookie okay so basically what naman is saying is that that cookie contains authentication information so if you are in the middle of a session and f- through xss or some other thing i'm able to hack your cookie and get your cookie then i can impersonate you i can use that same cookie to uh, do what you could have done yes so uh, okay so moving ahead uh, now we have seen the what is a cookie session cookie and persistent cookie now i will show you the reflected xss so there are three kind there were the three kind of xss i will be explaining the reflected and the stored so suppose uh, this is a application and this is asking for your name this is some sample application in this it is asking for your name suppose i type this uh, naman uh, i type naman so i have typed naman i submitted it. it is saying hello and naman okay it is asking for the my name now suppose i type this 1 2 3 4 it is saying hello 1 2 3 4 it is not uh, restricting me to any enter anything else now suppose i type some garbage value some value which contains some special characters also like semicolon and quote it is also reflected back can you see it uh, now uh, if i type this what should happen and this is the input why is that why it is not printing hello and this is script alert and something something it, it will not go to the server no it will go to the server yes exactly exactly so what will happen, what is happening here whenever uh, i am giving an input say naman it is going to the server a request is uh, made to the server and the server is extracting those parameter and reflecting it back so in the previous examples like naman 1 2 3 4 4 there is no this is not the executable code uh, for browser this is a executable script is a executable code browser thinks this is a executable code because it is written written in that way but naman and 1 2 3 4 is not a executable code it renders as it is so what if i uh, type this uh, and su- click the submit button you can see the script is executed this is a xss attack so why is that because in the reflection in the html page contain this script and a browser when browser is parsing that script it executes it so any doubts but even prints hello what sir also prints hello hello is for the server hello is by default is there hello naman hello 1 2 3 4 hello is server is reflecting hello then hello hello uh, if i type hello then hello anything it, it will reflect okay so now this is a suppose i am an attacker now i want to ex, uh, execute some malicious script this is some normal script which is says alert this is a xsr attack <laughs> now now i want this script to be executed inside the victims browser right now survey uh, until now what have what have happened is attacker has typed some script it reflect and execute inside the attacker's web browser right now how attacker can craft an attack so that this script is executed inside the victims browser any idea it could be hosted in the profile and when someone visits the profile then it this could be a so okay and uh, i could upload my profile okay so when uh, someone visits my profile it could be executed at that point 
okay that is actually stored accesses you are talking about it the script is not stored on the server suppose okay uh, you are saying uh, if i am go browse around uh, from uh, two different tabs suppose here and come back here the script is gone <coughs> now script is not there right the script is no, not no. stored uh, say for example i am a user of a linkedin yeah sure okay i could create my profile yes in the profile field somewhere i would upload a script okay the malicious script yeah malicious script yes when someone visits my profile that thing would be downloaded on his browser and that would be executed so what what you have done is you have actually stored that script inside the server page right yeah now that is a stored accesses actually here what is happening you have given your script and it is reflecting back at the same time it is not stored on the server okay fine okay so okay so you are talking about like this okay suppose uh, here you type some name one and here you typing the script right now if you sign this guest book now here you have actually stored that script in this page now if you browse around and come back here again like you were saying that if another user came then script again executed okay that is uh, stored actually so what is reflected so to, un to understand the reflected accesses you need to understand how the parameter are passed to the server there are two methods http get and http post any idea about that get method uh, does not it uh, basically it uh, gives all the information at the url Whereas the post In, method uh, information you are talking about the parameters you have passed in the forms yes parameters are, uh, are can be seen at the url yes. whereas at the post method we have a streams internal streams parameters goes in uh, with the with the help of streams over there okay yeah, yes you are right so in the get method this application is using the get method actually so how do i know that suppose i type naman <coughs> and submit it then you have to see the url like she was saying then in the get request the parameter are passed in the url if you are not able to see it i will just read it out local host the ip address of uh, this uh, application then the name name is the name of this input field equals to the my name whichever which i have passed naman okay now this request is made to the server server extract this value from the url and reflect that back but while in the post in the post it does not send the uh, parameters in the url it sends uh, the uh, parameter after the http header as a stream like she was saying okay so here i will be using the get method now suppose instead of typing my name uh, now the attacker what attacker can craft a url attacker will craft url like this http it is is it visible so http localhost dwa vulnerability this is a url of my application till here after that there is a question mark which specifies now the parameter values name value pairs will be starting now here you can say the name here you can see the name which is the name of the input field and after that my script which is a malicious script okay sir so what about the length of get and post uh, if you are using post we can uh, send large amount of large data enough, yes you are right uh, in the get there are some limitation on the length of the input so get is totally different. So post is unlimited. Okay, okay. Uh, oh yes. If for the length for the get is less, for post it is unlimited. Unlimited. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, because uh, what happens is in the get request you can the URL is stored in the bookmarks also. So if another user came, he can see the your bookmarks or your history. So there will be a values of your username and the password, then he can track you. Okay. so in the crafted uh, url which is attack attacker will craft a url which is saying the name equals to this script okay which is a malicious script now this url will be sent to the victim through a email say and this and and saying click on this url you may win something if victim is uh, foolish enough he will click here and a request will be generated from his browser to this application and that A script which was inside the name is reflected back inside the victim's browser and executes is it clear 
that's how an attacker can craft a url and execute the malicious scripts any questions yeah okay so now attacker wants to execute a malicious script inside the victim's browser right so now what he can do he can craft a url like this the url of the application and after that the name of the uh, input field and after that the malicious script as an input because uh, uh, when we, we saw now that uh, if we type naman then a get request is generated to the server and server reflect its, reflect, reflect its back now he will craft this url and send this url to the victim victim in the victim email victim's email now if victim's email uh, victim clicks on this url this request is generated from his browser to the server and server extract this script malicious script and reflect that script to the uh, browser of the victim's browser and that executes and that scripts can steal the cookies of the uh, victim and send this back sends this cookie to uh, attacker clear this is not possible when you post message you know this is possible but this it is, it is slightly complicated this is not possible if you post nice the application use the post method yes that it is possible but the uh, idea would be different idea is to some uh, to create a form and submit those parameter uh, submit uh, and enter the script here there attacker will create a page in that page there will be a form and that form okay the, how the attacker will know whether the application use the post method or get method he can know na if uh, uh, he he has he, he also has access to web application right i had the uh, access to this application attacker will have access to the application he can see if the parameters are going in the url it is okay. a goat if it is uh, get sorry if it is not going then it is a post my favorite exam question is can xss also be implemented if the request is not get and it is uh, it is post instead so the answer is actually yes it's a little bit round about using forms and so on but you can still attack okay so this uh, i am done with the reflected xss now i will move on to the stored xss yeah if you are using captica okay. image captica any any cross site scripting can be occurred sorry in the page if you are using the captica in a google captcha yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, captcha then it's not possible yes that is a protection against it we have a same origin policy yeah what uh, so what is the same origin policy first uh, say suppose there is a link and uh, once we establish a session uh, with that particular website all the uh, pages that would be uh, coming from that site would be trusted so if i have this uh, and this site suppose i received an email and uh, this email was from the another domain so it is from the different origin Yes. so it may not be executed why not because when the you click on that url that request is generated from your browser you are not check yes browser generates that request but when i have a same origin policy in place it is coming from the different domain so will it be executed yes it is coming from the different domain but request is made to the same application and the same application is reflecting those parameter with to your browser in same origin what happens okay i will tell you the same origin same origin policy is implemented the by the browser so what happens suppose there are um, you can use the iframes i iframes you know uh, html uh, yes. code so in the iframe you can load different domain inside the same page so you can uh, open a facebook.com and gmail.com in the same page using the iframes right so if gmail wants to execute some code some javascript inside the facebook.com then it won't browser won't allow the facebook.com to oh sorry gmail.com to execute a script inside the facebook.com that is same origin policy here you are requesting the uh, uh, this web application from your browser and this request goes to the server server reflects the uh, parameters back so who will get affected server or client user client user user's cookies is stealing script is executed in the client side now goal was to execute the malicious script inside the victim's browser uh, the attacker you, if he wants to get your uh, uh, banking information like your username password yes you said that you are going to get a url yes okay when you click on that you are going to get a website where you get look and feel of total same as the bank 
Okay. No, 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 no. No, the the whatever web page that is being displayed, that will be same as the bank. So how come it come like that? The reason is we are able to generate this source code. If you go through the source code, okay, and you try to put your own name and then put that link to that person, obviously you will get the same look and feel. Okay, so when we are trying to enter something, your username, password for such links, first we have to go to the URL where it, we have to find out whether it is coming from that same bank or not. Yes. That is the first option. Yes, yes, yes. So why this has come? The reason is, uh, since the source code is being uh, freely, see, uh, we can view the source code freely. When you just right click and then go for view source code, you are able to see. Is there any option where if you right click and see also, you don't get the source code? No, you can always see the source code of the web page, right? No, generally, we want to design a Google website. Okay. So hardly it will take something like uh, five minutes or not more than that. The reason is yes. if you go through the source code, copy and just paste. copy and then put the same name, you'll get the same thing. Yes. Only thing, uh, whatever links that are there, images that may be not displayed. You if you are not using the appropriate browser. No, that will be displayed. If you download those images, you can also use those images. Yeah. But the yeah. differentiation would be, that is phishing actually. Yeah. The difference is, you will not see the, if you host this uh, uh, fake uh, page inside your server, then the URL will be different. Yeah. The URL is different because that won't be a www.google.com. That will be your URL actually, your server URL. So to make it much harder for the attacker, uh -huh. so can we make such a way that when he right clicks also, he does not see the source code. Yeah, that is a browser property. You, you, always, you can always see the... I have the JavaScript for that. By using the JavaScript, we can hide the... Uh, why, why do you want to hide actually? That is a... So that it will be pretty... It will take pretty good time for the hacker to develop such kind of website. And send the if same URL hacker, to the... If hacker is smart enough, he can design his own web page. Like same web page. If he knows this stuff... But he should also know the resolution of your web page. This it differs from one yeah. explorer to other explorer also. Yeah, that is, but if he's smart enough, he can always code it, right? That is phishing actually. It's not cross-site scripting. Okay, uh, now I will move on to the stored XSS. Okay, so this is another application which has vulnerability of stored accesses. What it is doing, it is asking, it is asking for a name and a message. So suppose I type, say Naman, and some message. This is a workshop. And sign. So now what has happened is, you can see here, the value, the na my name, and the message is permanently stored in the server. What do, I, what do I mean by permanently stored? Suppose I go around in some other tabs and come back here. It is still there. So what is the use of it? Say suppose in the social networking websites, you some like, like take Facebook, you post something and it is viewed, it is permanently stored on the page and some friend of you, a friend of you can see that page and see what you have written, right? So it, it is same thing. So now what happens if an attacker comes and type something like this? What do you think what will happen? First, what will happen now? Every time the page is created, it will be executed. Yes. First of all, in this case, it will be executed inside the attacker's browser because he can see this page also. As you can see, this is an XSS attack. The exec this is executed inside the attacker's now victim came, victim, victim came to this application, come to this application and go to the, see, uh, to see who has signed this uh, guest book and he comes and the script executes and this script could be malicious and stole his cookie, steal his cookie and send these cookies to attacker. This is a simple and stored accesses and it out in stored accesses. How do we know which site is uh, the access? Access is vulnerable. You have to test it. Like I said, in the reflected, suppose some you are using, uh, you are going to e-commerce website, say, and you want to search for, say, some shirt, and if it's saying that we don't have shirt, 
or say you you are in the you are in uh, Mintra, you are searching for car. We don't have car. So what it is doing? It is extracting those parameters and reflecting it back. So if you type script and there is no protection on the server side, then it will be reflected back and it will be executed. That is a test for reflected accesses. I want and to I want to make an eye on a serious problem. Yes. Suppose uh, we store the script in a DNS lookup table directly. Sorry? Suppose uh, when any site is accessed, it yes. is directly looking for a DNS table, right? Yes. So if we make an entry of script by cracking a table, like if you if you type www.google.com, yes, it will yes. uh, run my script because ultimately uh, the uh, IP of the google.com is not verified by www.google.com but by with some malicious script. Yeah, sure. That can be a problem. Is there any solution or have you ever seen this thing? Actually, the problem is not clear to me, first of all. Suppose, <laughs> you know DNS table, right? DNS yeah, table. Yeah, but DNS, sir, okay. Yes. What DNS lookup will do, it will uh, uh, match the IP Domain address. Domain name and IP address. Yes. yes. So suppose when google.com is uh, searched, the malicious script is directly executed without uh, getting the IP address. Malicious script? Uh, if we crack the table, DNS table, DNS lookup table. <laughs> The script is stored in the DNS table. The script is stored in a DNS yes, table. Yes, if we crack that thing. So I think DNS only does the do, uh, translation to domain name to the IP address. <coughs> so how the script is stored on the DNS table? By doing some uh, more work on that DNS, uh, DNS server. If we crack the DNS server, ultimately DNS server is nothing but a uh, matching thing. It is matching the IP address with the name, site name. Yes. So if we, in, in uh, the entry of the IP address, uh, without uh, using the site name, if we put the script, then that is possible that script will be executed when you type. No, it won't be executed. There is no script actually stored on the DNS. But is it possible? No, it, it won't be possible. Oh. Okay, so now uh, I am done with the XSS demo.